Today I'm going to be building a gaming PC and here's a quick sneak peek of what it looks like once it's been built. Now you can screw the motherboard down just here and there's another screw here, here, one here, one there, one there and three at the bottom. Okay so we just take some of this thermal paste and just put a small amount in the middle of the GPU. Then give the inside of the case a final wipe with the cloth. Today I'm going to be building a gaming PC and here's a quick sneak peek of what it looks like once it's been built. This is a nice looking computer where the RGB lighting can be set to any colour such as white or red, green, purple, blue and so on. It can also be set to many different lighting modes as well but obviously it's not all about the looks. So I'll be showing you how to build this computer and then how well it can handle playing Cyberpunk 2077. So that's a quick look at the finished build. Let's look at the parts I'll be using. The case is a white Corsair IQ 465X RGB case, which comes with three pre-installed RGB fans at the front. And we have an ASUS Prime Z490A motherboard, an Intel Core i7-10700K processor, 16 gigabytes of Corsair RGB RAM running at 3200 megahertz, an RTX 3070 graphics card by Gigabyte, three LL120 RGB fans by Corsair, two fan splitters, a one terabyte M.2 NVMe solid state drive by Western Digital, a four terabyte hard disk drive also by Western Digital, the CPU cooler is an Arctic Freezer 34 eSports single fan edition. And finally, the power supply is the white version of Corsair's RM750X. So here's all the parts at a glance. I'll be showing you how to build this computer, but I won't be going into such minute detail as I normally do. So this will be more like a quick guide for a change. So let's make a start by putting the processor into the motherboard going to be installing the processor into the motherboard just here. So just lift up this arm and the lid. Then line up the small triangle on the processor with the dot on the motherboard. And put down the lid. and the processor arm and take off the plastic top. Next we need to take out these two screws and take off the solid state drive heat shield. Now we're going to put in the solid state drive and as you can see here it's keyed so it can only go in one way. So let's slide that in at a slight angle. Then push this down and screw it into place just here. Now you don't have to screw this down too tightly. And once you've done that, we can put the heat shield back on. So first, let's take off the plastic. And then put it down and screw it into place here and here. So let's put the memory sticks just here on the motherboard. Take one of the 8GB sticks of memory and put it into the slot that's one away from the processor. Take the second 8GB stick and put it into the slot that's furthest away from the processor. Now we're going to install the CPU cooler. This is easier to do when the motherboard is still outside of the computer case. So we're going to do this now while it's still on the table. The parts on the left we won't be using, but we'll be using all of the parts shown on the right. So the first thing to do is put the back plate onto the back of the motherboard. So now we have the back plate installed. You can see it from the front of the motherboard in these four places here just sticking through. So now we're going to install these bolts in those four places. 
So you just tighten these bolts by hand. You don't need any tools for this. Next, take the fan off by removing this metal clip. Then take the metal brackets and install one onto this side. And one onto this side. Next, add some thermal paste to the processor. And spread the paste so that you have a thin layer of paste on the processor. And once you spread the thermal paste, put the fan back onto the heatsink and take this label off. Then put the cooler down onto the bolts with the fan nearest the memory. By the way, there's a plastic label to take off here, here and here, so we take those off now. So next we're going to take off this side panel by removing these four screws here. And we also need to remove the other side panel by taking out these two screws. So next we can install the motherboard just here and these cables are in the way, so I'm just going to untie those. And now we can put the motherboard into the case. Now you can screw the motherboard down just here, and there's another screw here, here, one here, one there, one there, and three at the bottom. Now we can install the hard disk drive into the back of the computer case just here. So let's take out this bottom tray. Install the hard drive into the bracket. And put it back into the case. So I've taken the front panel connectors and I've pulled them through this hole just here. And these need to be plugged into the motherboard on the pins on the right bottom corner of the motherboard. And the reset switch can be plugged in just below the power switch. Take the USB cable from the back of the case, pull it through the same hole, then plug it into the motherboard just here. Now find the cable marked audio from the back of the case and thread it through the hole just here. Then plug it in just here on the motherboard. Now find the USB connector and plug it in just here on the motherboard next to the memory. Now we can install the power supply into the case. And as you can see, the power supply doesn't have any cables plugged into it yet. So we're going to take these cables here and plug them in just here into the power supply. Now we can plug the power supply into the back of the case just here and it will go this way round with the fan facing down. So next we'll be installing these RGB fans and one will be installed at the back of the case and then two at the top of the case. So let me explain how the fans are set up. All the fans I'm using in this computer are the same. That is, they are all Corsair LL120 fans. Each fan has two cables. So let's get a close-up of these connectors. The slim connector shown on the left will plug into the lighting node core, which can be found at the back of the computer case. The fan connector shown on the right will be connected to a fan splitter. Then with the second fan, its slimmer connector will be plugged into the lighting node core 
and its other connector into the fan splitter. Then the third fan, its slimmer connector goes here and its other connector into the fan splitter. Then the other end of the fan splitter will be plugged into the motherboard. Then you do exactly the same thing with the other three fans and that's why we have two fan splitters. So screw the fans into place, then connect them up to the fan splitters and the lighting node core. So next we can install the graphics card just here on the motherboard. So first of all we need to take out this bracket and this one as well. Just unscrew it. And then install the graphics card into this slot just here. and then screw it into place. Then plug in the 6-pin and 8-pin PCIe power connectors. Then all that's left to do is to tidy the cables at the back of the case and put the side panels back on. And here it is completely finished. I gave the motherboard a BIOS update, installed Windows 10 and installed all the necessary drivers. At the time of this recording, generally speaking, this computer is good for gaming at 1440p resolution or below and for playing some games at 4K. When this computer is running at idle or if you're just doing some light work such as browsing the internet, this computer is very quiet. By the way, the graphics card's fans and the power supply's fan only spin up when needed. The white case really shows off the RGB lighting with its reflective surfaces, which just enhances the colour that little bit more. So let's see how well this computer gets on with a demanding game, such as Cyberpunk 2077. So I set the resolution to 1440p, and in the graphics section, I chose Ultra Settings, set the field view to 90, and turned off Chromatic Aberration and Motion Blur, as I didn't want those settings to make this game look blurry. Then I turned on all the ray tracing options, with ray traced lighting set to ultra and DLSS set to balanced. By the way, I recorded this by pointing a camera at the monitor, so that nothing will affect the frames per second in this game. So the game might not look as sharp as it does when you're seeing it first hand, but the frames per second are accurate. Anyway, let's talk about how this computer performs when running this game. In many areas, the frames per second will often stay in the 60s, as you can see here. And the temperatures are very good, with the graphics card running in the mid 60s and the CPU running in the low 60s. When you're in the more graphically intense areas, such as places like this, the FPS can sometimes go into the 50s. But if I didn't have the FPS counter on, I most likely wouldn't have even noticed any difference. The fact that the GPU is running close to 100% shows that this computer's graphics card is being well optimised. And the CPU isn't being pushed that hard, so it's easily coping with it all. As soon as you come away from a busy area, the frames per second will often go back into the 60s again. As for driving, most of the time I was averaging around 60 FPS. Whatever I did and wherever I went in this game, it always ran smoothly and the graphics looked amazing. When it came to playing this game in HD resolution, I didn't change any of the settings and the frames per second were often in the 80s in many areas. Sometimes many more FPS. In the 70s when amongst the graphically demanding areas, and around an average of 75 in the driving parts of this game. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Today I'm going to be repasting a graphics card and for this you'll need some thermal paste, a lint-free cloth, a Phillips crosshead screwdriver and some thermal paste remover. 
So first, before you get started, make sure you ground yourself or use an anti-static wrist strap. And also, just so you know, doing this may void your graphics card's warranty if yours has one. So let's make a start on this. So the first thing we want to do is separate the top part of the graphics card from the bottom. So this one has a back plate. Not all graphics cards have a back plate. If yours doesn't, you'll just see the bare circuit board. So we want to separate this circuit board from the rest of the card. So if you look through the card, you can see which screws are holding this together. And on this particular card, these four screws are holding this together. But just check on yours to make sure there's no other screws from this side, this side, and this side. Also, if your graphics card does have a warranty, you might have a sticker over one of the screws like this one. So if yours does, and you're not concerned about your warranty, just remove the sticker first so that you can get to the screw. So first we're going to take out these four screws to separate the card in half. So when it comes to taking the screws out, just start with any of the four screws and then do the screw in the opposite corner. Just half unscrew them to start with. And when you do take the screws out, it's a good idea to put them down on a table in some kind of order so that you know where each screw should go because sometimes these graphics cards can use different size screws so just make sure there's no more screws holding this part and this part together and also pull out any connectors this wire here is normally stiff enough to keep this connector the right way round so it'd be easier when you're assembling this graphics card again to know which way round this connector should go into this port here. So once you've taken out the necessary screws and a connector or two, just give the card a slight wiggle just to make sure there's no more screws holding the two halves in place. And also the paste, the old paste can get a bit hard if it's quite an old card. So just giving this a wiggle will break the paste. So next we can pull this up. So next we need to clean off the old thermal paste here and here. For this I'm going to use Arctic Silver's Arty Clean. Use bottle number one with the white top to drop some of its liquid on the GPU and the heat sink. This will help to remove the old thermal paste. Once that's done, leave it for about a minute. So the liquid has been on this for about a minute now. So now we can use the lint-free cloth to just wipe off the old paste. Then using bottle number two with the blue top, Put some liquid on the GPU and the heat sink and leave it for about one minute. This will help to purify both areas. So the liquid has been on both surfaces for about a minute now. So we can just wipe it with a lint free cloth. So now we can add some thermal paste to the GPU. And the paste I'm using is called Arctic MX4, which is really good paste to help keep the graphics card cool. And this particular one is non-conductive. So in other words, if you spill some of this onto the circuit board of the graphics card, it won't make any difference. You can just do your best to wipe it off, but it won't affect the graphics card even when it's turned back on. So let's add a little bit of this to the GPU now. Okay, so we just take some of this thermal paste and just put a small amount in the middle of the GPU. And 
and then using a spreader or even the lint free cloth we can spread it around the metallic part of the GPU. Okay so I've spread the paste out you only need a thin layer of paste on the GPU you don't have to get an exact amount of paste on as long as it looks something like this and that would be perfectly fine. So now we've put the paste on we can put the graphics card back together just line up the screw holes then half screw in the first screw in one corner then go to the opposite corner and half screw in that one as well and then the other two screws and then screw it down fairly tightly to make sure the GPU is right up against the heatsink. If your graphics card has any more screws to put back, put those back in now and then finally put the connector back in. So that's this graphics card repasted and ready to go. If you've got any questions leave a comment in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer you. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Hi there. Today I'm going to show you how to clean a gaming computer. I'll also show you the temperatures of this computer before and after cleaning it. You see a dusty computer will run hotter and can therefore potentially run slower. But once a dusty computer has had a good clean it can give you more frames per second when gaming, faster gaming loading times, faster boot up times and can also give you a faster computer in general but this will vary depending on how dusty the computer was in the first place. Now this computer hasn't had a clean in quite a while so it's probably going to be quite dusty in there so let's take a look. Yep it's quite dusty inside. I did check the temperatures just before opening this computer and the processor whilst under load was going up to about 81 centigrade and the graphics card whilst under load was running up to about 73 centigrade. We'll check the temperatures again after cleaning this PC to see if it's made any difference. I'll be taking a few parts out of this computer to give it a good clean. If you're doing this with your own computer just take note of where those bits went and which way around they were plugged in. To clean this computer I'll be using a cloth, cotton buds and a can of compressed air. Links in the description if you want to check out one of these for yourself. So first off I'll take out the graphics card just here and I'll take out its power connectors first. You need to push this clip in here and then pull this connector out and same with the second one if your graphics card has two of these bit of a rock in motion can help pull this one out. Now we can take out these two screws just here that's holding the graphics card in. Now we take the graphics card out. Most graphics cards are held in by a clip just here so you just push the clip and pull the graphics card out. Next I want to take out this back case fan so I'll unplug it from the motherboard and then unscrew it from the back of the case. Next the memory sticks these are held in either by one tab just up here like these are or some of them are held in by a tab here and here. So open up the tabs and pull the memory sticks out. And take out the processor fan, just unclip it from the motherboard first. And unclip it from the heatsink. Most processor fans just unclip like this. Next the DVD drive, if yours has one, take out its cables from the back and then 
unclip or unscrew it and take it out of the computer case. Next I take out the power supply's dust filter. Not all cases have these but if yours does just slide it out. Next disconnect any fans from the front of the case. This one only has one fan at the front of this computer case so I just take this one out. Now I take off this front panel which I can just pull it from the bottom and take it off. Now not all front panels come off like this. Some are held in by screws or clips just here but now this is off I can unscrew this front case fan. So that might seem like quite a lot to take out of the computer case but I am showing you how to get the computer as clean as possible. So that's enough taking out parts, let's start cleaning this computer. Using the cloth and the can of compressed air, start at the top of the case and work your way down. When using the can, keep it as upright as possible and don't shake the can and just use short sharp bursts. If the can itself gets extremely cold, let it sit for a while to warm up, then carry on. Blow air through the processor's heatsink too. Pull off the worst of the dust with your hand, then blow air through the fins of the heatsink. Keep going all the way down, removing as much dust as you can from the motherboard, all around the case, the hard drives and anything else in there. Then give the inside of the case a final wipe with the cloth. Microfiber cloths work well for this task, but you can use any cloth that is clean and dry. Next use the cloth to clean any case fans and the processor fan. Clean the cables too. Use the can of air to get any remaining dust off. If your graphics card has a plastic or metal cover on its top like this one, you can wipe it with a cloth. But if it's a bare circuit board here instead, use the can of air or the cotton buds to clean the top part of the graphics card. Use the can of air to blow through the dust from inside the graphics card. Use the cotton buds to clean its fans. Then the can of air again. Clean the power supply dust filter with a cloth and the front panel inside and out. Give the computer case's side panel a wipe and finally wipe the DVD drive if you have one. Once everything has been cleaned you can put the parts back in the case in the reverse order that you took them out. So let's screw the fan back on at the front of the case and plug that fan into the motherboard. Next on goes the front panel, the power supplies dust filter, processor fan back on and plug it into the motherboard, plug in the memory sticks, screw on the back case fan and plug it into the motherboard and finally plug in the graphics card, screw it into place, then plug in its power connectors. As you can see this computer looks much better now it's had a good clean. The temperatures have most likely dropped too. So let's put the side panel back on and test it out. Well the temperature has dropped on the processor by 11 degrees centigrade and the graphics card temperature has dropped by 2 degrees centigrade. So this computer looks better and it's running a bit cooler too. Some computers will see a much bigger difference than this. As I mentioned before it depends on how dusty the computer is in the first place. It's well worth cleaning your computer about once a year. It doesn't take very long and you may see a performance boost as well. Thanks for watching, please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video.
hey, just before you go, if you want more relaxing stuff, you might know that I wrote a book, Seven Habits of Calm and Happy People, and now I even made an audiobook version. It's the best habits that work for me for being more calm, more at peace, and I think you're gonna like it too, so you can find it for free as a gift at findcalm.com book. Find